I think the added value for um, of the G20 is is that it brings uh, a diverse set of countries that, that are systemically important um, in, in the global uh, political and economic system uh, to really um, bring solutions to to some of the key challenges that um, that the world faces because these can no longer just be the ex exclusive um, reserve of the of the G7 or of a few Western countries. So uh, the the G20 is significant for its diversity, the diversity of of, of voices, the diversity of of thoughts, the diversity of of traditions and ways of uh, of approaching uh, problems. So in a sense, it, it covers uh, much of, of the global sphere. It doesn't necessarily represent everyone, but um, it, it is sufficiently representative compared, say, to, to the G7 or to other uh, multilateral formations. I think the main deficiency, as with um, uh, processes or institutions that are broadly representative is that um, they, it tends to be less effective uh, in, in decision-making processes. It tends to be less efficient. But also I think crucially is, is that it is an informal mechanism that uh, is not vested with uh, decision-making authority. Uh, the agenda of the G20 oftentimes uh, depends on on the chair or the host country uh, at that particular point in time. And, and that lends it, its, its agenda to a variation from one summit to, to, to the other. And I think at some point uh, in, in various aspects of, of its decision making, uh, it has to reach a certain level of institutionalization. Multilateral trade um, uh, really uh, falls within the, the remit of the World Trade Organization. Uh, the, the various um, uh, member states that constitute uh, the, the WTO and, and the, the critical decisions about, say, a global round of, of multilateral trade negotiations are driven at that, at that level. Uh, the role of the G20 in that respect, as I see it at least, is that um, it's a confidence building measure uh, because you have top heavy politicians, at least at the leader summit uh, in, in the G20, they can uh, at least uh, express some, uh, some political force uh, or some political persuasion. Uh, to get countries to focus on what needs to, to, to be done uh, to conclude, say, a round of trade negotiations, uh, in this case the Doha uh, round of multilateral trade negotiations. The, there's a perennial question that uh, has always arisen in the context of um, trade, which is uh, regionalism versus multilateralism and, and whether uh, the uh, the, the latter, uh, sorry, the former is a stepping stone or a stumbling block to concluding global uh, rounds of trade negotiations. And I think it's, it can be a bit of both. And, um, and I, I, I think, you know, those countries that uh, feel that they are better served by uh, engaging in more regional processes uh, are within their right to, to do so, but, but uh, they should not do it at the cost of uh, concluding a, a global round of, of trade negotiations. And I think at some point uh, there, there needs to be a recognition by um, various parties to, um, to WTO negotiations that um, uh, they have to um, demonstrate political will and, and they have to bring in political muscle to, to ensure that uh, the issues that are a sticking point uh, in the negotiations are, are resolved uh, and, and that uh, there is efficiency 
uh, in, in decision-making processes, but also effectiveness uh, with respect to the ki kind of outcomes uh, that could satisfy the, the interests of um, the majority of the world's citizens who are developing uh, countries, developing, developing states uh, currently. Mm -hmm.